the Academy has to create a new award category now, and that is Best Mustache Origin Story, because Death on the Nile would win every year. Nothing's topping it. Death on the Nile is the sequel to 2017's Murder on the Orient Express, a movie that in which I really enjoyed. It got a lot of mixed reviews when it first came out. This is once again directed by Kenneth Branagh and also stars Kenneth Branagh as the world's greatest detective, Hercule Poirot. And in Death on the Nile, Hercule Poirot must solve the biggest mystery in cinema history. Do they have enough champagne to fill the Nile? We have the Karnak all to ourselves, a chef and enough champagne to fill the Nile. All right, that joke's getting really old really fast, so I'll just stop it right there. So Death on the Nile sees Hercule Poirot invited to a wedding party that aboard a yacht, and someone on this yacht gets murdered, and now he has to interrogate everybody that's on board and investigate this murder and determine who the suspect actually is. Now, like I said, I really enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express, the 2017 version. One thing I liked about that movie is that it really, really kept me guessing. I did not expect the entire cast to be behind the actual murder in that movie. But I decided to rewatch that movie today before Death on the Nile, just for a refresher, even though the two don't really connect. It's two completely different casts and separate standalone stories, but I just wanted a refresher before I went into Death on the Nile. Something I disliked a lot and didn't pick up on on my first couple of viewings of Murder on the Orient Express was the production design, just how much CG was actually used in that movie. And how Kenneth Branagh just really felt like he took the easy route in that movie's production design. I mean, there's a CGI train. It didn't feel like they were on actual sets. It just felt like they were acting in front of a lot of green screens. The entire backdrops of, those, of that movie is green screen. That stuff is still prominent in Death on the Nile, but I think it's not as noticeable. I think there's a lot more production value here than there is in Orient Express. I feel like the actors are actually inhibiting actual sets and then using CGI backdrops to help bring those sets to life. But I, at least I feel like when we're watching scenes on the deck of a yacht, I feel like we're on the set of a deck on a yacht. We're not just in front of a green screen pretending that there's a, a deck of a yacht there with the backdrop of Egypt and the Nile in the background. I thought Brana really improved there and I thought his directing actually was a lot better in this movie than it was in Orient Express. And I guess that's my way of saying I like this movie slightly more than or Orient Express. I'm sorry, I don't agree with the critics on this one either. These two movies don't add anything new to the genre. This one especially, I was a bit more interested and engaged in the story and I think that's because Kenneth Branagh knew that the first half of this movie needed a brisk pace, especially after the more slow burn pace a murder on the Orient Express, where he's interrogating people and they're stopped in the middle of a mountain on a bridge. It doesn't feel like there's anything around them. Like that movie just has a huge sense of isolation. So it doesn't feel like there's constantly something happening or when there are events happening, they don't feel like they build to anything. That could be a detriment in this film because the first act of this film is essentially the first half of the movie. I would say we don't even get to the murder until about an hour of the way through. Maybe a little shorter, maybe even a little longer. There's probably going to be a lot of people groaning in the audience, thinking that, well, I thought this movie was about a murder. We're on the Nile, but where's the death? Oh, there it is, an hour and ten minutes into the movie. For me, what was actually going on in the first half made that first half fly by a lot. I think it made it a little bit more eventful while we built up to the actual tension in the murder or murders that occur in the second half of the film. For many people that might be a detriment. They might just want to get straight to the yacht and straight to the murder and try and figure out who the suspect of these murder or murders actually is. And because of that it also leaves less time for the mystery, but more time for what feel like these excursions to these exotic locales in Egypt. I understand that. For me, it picked up the pace a little bit, as opposed to Orient Express. With that brisk pace in the first half, Niall was able to ratchet up more tension than Orient Express did. It made me care a little bit more about the mystery at hand, when that mystery becomes the main focus in the second half. I will say, unlike Orient Express, this movie is predictable as shit. Crank that predictability dial up to 11. 
If you've seen the trailers, you can probably guess who the suspect or suspects are. I'm not going to confirm if there's one or two, or even three, or maybe even the entire cast again. But when it comes to the actual movie, when you're sitting there watching the movie, it's not, the screenplay is not subtle at all. A character or characters spew out things that you automatically know. It's like, keep your eye on that character. That's definitely the person or, per or people that are committing a murder here. And I was right. <laughs> I also think that the cast in Orient Express is a lot stronger. Here, I think we have a little bit of a weaker cast in terms of acting ability. Not to take anything away from anybody's talent, but when you don't have Michelle Pfeiffer or Judi Dench or Johnny Depp in a movie, but you have the likes of Emma Mackey, Russell Brand, where the hell has he been for the past 10 years? I think the last thing I saw him in was forgetting Sarah Marshall. Wait, that was like 2008, so it's more than 10 years. Gal Gadot, weirdo cannibal corpse over here. I think Murder on the Orient Express had the better cast, wasn't as predictable, but I think the slower pace didn't get me into Murder on the Orient Express as, as quick as Death on the Nile did with its brisk pace and the events that occur in the first half, but Death on the Nile is by far more predictable. Had a bit more fun with this one as opposed to Orient Express, but I do think they're both solid murder mysteries. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I think the critics are wrong, so what? <laughs> Not everybody's gonna agree on an opinion on a movie. I don't like Dune all that much, and everybody loves that fucking movie. I don't see the appeal of it. I don't... I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with Denny not getting nominated for Best Director because I don't think that that movie's directed all that well. But hey, that's one man's opinion. Everybody else has their own opinions. Just like how I think we're going to have our own opinions on Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. It's cliched, it's predictable, the cast isn't as strong, but I think it's a bit more fun and is more fast-paced than its predecessor. And that's going to lead me to say I think Death on the Nile is still worth enjoying with three quarters worth of a bucket of popcorn. Speaking of the popcorn, AMC brought back the buckets. It's the, I, didn't, I didn't get a bag with my large popcorn because I always order a large popcorn and one day I just walked up and they didn't have the buckets anymore. So I was like, God damn it, I'm stuck with a I'm stuck with a bag now. And then I walk up to the concessions and I see the buckets. And I was like, please do not be for the gourmet popcorn. So I ordered a large popcorn and they gave it to me in a bucket. The bucket, I forgot how big the buckets are. Like, like this big, damn it, but so happy the buckets were back. <laughs> That's a side note. So if you did see Death on the Nile, I want some feedback. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.